Hello, and welcome to Network Diagram 101, where the left and the right side of the brain meet. Today we're going to talk about tip number six, using grids and guides. Using grids and guides is an essential way to keep your icons lined up and evenly spaced. To use this feature, go to the View tab up at the top. Here you have a ruler option, grid option, and a guide option that we're interested in. We'll start by enabling the ruler, which will bring up the side rulers. And then we'll also enable the guide option. We can now pull guides from these side rulers into our diagram to give us something to line up our icons against. First, we draw a border around our page and find the center point. And even subdivide those more if we wanted to. You can also enable the grid up here in the left corner. This will create a nice grid that increases as you zoom in and decreases as you zoom out to keep things simple. So in this example, I want to draw a WAN diagram that is using a circular pattern and the remote sites will circle or revolve around the data center in kind of an orbiting fashion. There's another powerful tool up in this ribbon as well in this view tab. It's a uh, task panes. In this case, I'm going to use the size and position to create my circular shape that I'm going to use as a template. So I'm going to start by making some lines using the line tool. I'm just going to draw one any size at this point. What I'm going to do is I know that I want it to be 10 inches wide. So here in this size and position, I can just put the length and I know that it's exactly 10 inches. I'm going to now duplicate this line eight times. With one of the last line, I'm going to make it 14 inches. This is going to be the, uh, the horizontal. I'm going to now take these lines and rotate them. And that should do it. So here we have a bunch of lines, uh, all at different angles. The magic happens when we select them all. Go up to a line, line center, go back to line again, line middle. Now we have a perfect star cut into four quadrants for each 90 degree portion. Let's take it a step further by adding some circles. So first we'll start by going up to this tool here, go to the ellipse tool. I'm going to draw a circle. I'm holding the shift button down at the same time to make sure that it's a perfect circle. doesn't matter what size it is at this point. So we have our circle. I'm going to get rid of the fill. We're now going to copy that four times. First circle. Now because it's a perfect circle, if I change the height, it'll automatically change the width. So we're going to start with two inches. So now we have our four circles. We have our star. To control e, A, select everything. Go back up to our align center, align middle. Now we have a nice bullseye. It's perfect to place things on top of to keep this nice perfect circle, concentric circle and grid shape. Okay, so we got this grid shape. It's black, pretty distracting. Certainly can't just leave it in the middle of the diagram. So what we'll do is let's select it, control A. I'm going to group it together, control G. I'm going to go into my line options here. And I'm going to make the, kind of a dashed line just like the other guides do. It's a great way to keep it visible without it getting terribly distracting. I'd also like to change the color, kind of lighten it up a little bit. So now we have this great custom template that we can drag and drop our icons on. 
it's nice and light looks just like the guides with the uh, dotted lines it looks pretty good so even though we grouped it together it can still accidentally be selected so i think we need to utilize a layer that we can put it on and lock it from being selected we'll do that by selecting the grid that we made going up to layers assign to layer here it brings up some pre-built layers that i already have into the diagram in this case we have custom grid so i'm going to select that it's going to assign the, the grid that we created to that custom grid layer. We'll hit OK. So now once we did that, we can go back up to layers and layer properties. Here we have the three different layers that we had pre-created. And in the custom grid, one we're going to do is we're going to hit the lock button. Hit OK. So now we can't accidentally select that grid and it won't be a distraction when we're trying to place things into it. Now that we have the grid set up and locked in a specific layer, we can start populating the diagram. So now all we need to do is just add a title. And there we have it. So as you can see, uh, you, if you can make a shape, you can basically make it a grid or a guide, guiding pattern. In this case, I, I'm actually going to leave the pattern. I think it looks kind of cool, kind of like a like spider web. But it's a great way to keep the symmetry and, and the order of the actual overall diagram and add a little embellishment to it as well. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe if you thought this video was helpful.